what's going on everybody it's your boy mel welcome back to mel guy game and before you jump on my head before you say anything i know it's been a minute i know it's been a minute it's been a while since i uploaded okay it's been a while i haven't been here to break down games for y'all i haven't been here to give y'all expert predictions y'all probably was lost without me i ain't even gonna cap y'all probably was lost without me and that's okay but i'm back now i was sick i was feeling real bad i just had a period where i just wasn't really feeling good and i had finals right after that so you know i was just i was out of it man but i'm back now i'm feeling real good and I'm ready to talk some NBA playoffs with y'all, man. Come on. So before this video starts, I need everybody to go ahead, smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't yet. Go ahead, comment, do whatever you guys gotta do to show your support. It's greatly appreciated. And let's go ahead and get into this video. Now, if I would've told y'all that I'm liking these NBA playoffs, that'd be a lie. And I don't wanna lie to y'all. I don't wanna lie to y'all. But if I told y'all that I'm overly enjoying these NBA playoffs, I'm thoroughly interested in these NBA playoffs so far. Now that, that will be the truth. <laughs> I'm so intrigued that just to see who is going to take it all the way this year, who is going to make the deepest playoff run. Right now, it's seeming like it's anybody's title this year. And when I say anybody's title, I really do mean anybody's title. I mean, every series in the second round is now going to a game six. And with the playoffs being so tightly contested this year, it's really no telling who is gonna be taking home that Larry O'Brien trophy when it's all said and done. I mean, you got the Golden State Warriors who are really tapping into their championship experience in these playoffs. I mean, when I'm watching them and I'm watching their offense, it all just comes so naturally to them. And it's so cool to watch. And they be drawing up plays that I've never even seen before. And I'm sure y'all saw the Jordan Poole and Stephen Curry ring around the Rosie play. That caught everybody by surprise. And with their unique playmaking ability and their ability to spread the floor, this is a nightmare offense for opposing defenses. Combining the veteran leadership of Stephen Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green, and Andrew Wiggins, with the young talent of players like Jordan Poole, Jonathan Kaminga, Otto Porter Jr., and Gary Payton II, this team is poised to go really far. And don't get it mistaken now. Please don't get it mistaken. Just because they got shooters, doesn't mean they ain't talking about nothing on defense. For the playoffs, they're ranked first in defense with the second most blocks among all the teams in the playoffs and the third most steals. So when you talk about Golden State, don't just mention the offense, you better mention that defense too. And after taking a two year hiatus, the Golden State Warriors are back in a prime position to get right back to the finals. And regardless if you a Golden State Warrior fan or not, you gotta notice the noise that they making. Moving right along, we got the Grizzlies, who unfortunately just lost the NBA's most improved player, Ja Morant. Now, Ja Morant had an outstanding year, and it's been so exciting watching Ja Morant in this year's playoffs. And it's sad to see his season cut short, but the Memphis Grizzlies had no problem taking care of business in Game 5 against the Golden State Warriors, blowing them boys out 134 to 95. Now, out of all the teams remaining in this year's playoffs, I'm going to be honest, the Grizzlies aren't my pick to make it out the second round. Now, don't get me wrong. I love the Grizzlies. I love how they've been playing this year and in this year's playoffs. But if you've been watching them this year, you can just see how inexperienced they are when it comes to playoffs. And there's really nothing wrong with that. Playoff experience is something that comes over time the more successful your team becomes. But at the same time, it's just something that they're going to need moving forward if they're hoping to beat a lot of these more experienced teams. Now I'm all for upset. I really am. Don't get me wrong. I love when the underdog team comes out on top. But at the same time, I just don't know if it's possible the way this Golden State team is playing. Now I know during the regular season, they were like 20 and seven without John Morant and their team chemistry is through the roof. But at the same time, this is the playoffs. Everybody on the court is going 110% from the start of the game to the end. And I know they just blew out Golden State, so that was a good start. But at the same time, can they keep the pressure on a team that's way more experienced than them? Now, regardless the outcome of the Memphis Grizzlies postseason, this is really a season to remember. And I think it's going to mark the start of a new Memphis Grizzlies era and a really successful Memphis Grizzlies era at that. Now, going to the East, we got the Celtics. And I ain't going to lie to you, the Celtics have surprised me this postseason. 
from being the only team in the first round to sweep their opponent to now giving the defending champion Milwaukee Bucks a run for their money, the Celtics ain't nothing to play with. Now containing Giannis is one hard thing to do. And honestly, I'm not sure any team in the NBA can consistently contain Giannis. But one thing I feel like the Celtics have done is make sure that nobody else on the Bucks team beats them. I feel like the Celtics go into this series knowing that Giannis is gonna score. I mean, that's a given. But I feel like what they do well is containing everybody else on the Bucks team, at least to where they're not shooting as efficiently so that the team has to run through Giannis. Now, since this makes the Bucks kind of one dimensional, it allows for the Celtics to be put in a more comfortable position when they're guarding Giannis. And one thing I really like about the Celtics is how they constantly match when it comes to offense. It seems like every time the Bucks score, the Celtics are marching down the court doing the exact same thing. And this makes for some really exciting moments down the stretch of a game. And what I think really helps this Celtics offense is their playmaking. I mean, I really love how every guy on the Celtics offense plays unselfish. And for every Celtics possession, they never rush a shot. They never force anything and they always find the open man. And as long as the Celtics keep up their outstanding playmaking, I think they have a real good chance at making a deep playoff run. Now, staying in the East, we got the defending champion Milwaukee Bucks. Now, to say the Milwaukee Bucks have been dominant is a real understatement. I mean, to be without one of your best shooters, Chris Middleton, for the entire second round of the playoffs and to be in a position to close out in game six against a really good Boston Celtics team, I think that tells you just how good this team is. Now, one thing I think the Bucks do a really good job at is getting a lot of fast break points. Among the remaining playoff teams in the NBA, they rank first in defensive rebounds with 40 a game. And being able to grab those defensive rebounds, get back on offense, it creates a lot of wide open good looks. And also grabbing those boards prevents a lot of second chance points for your opponents, which the Bucks have been really good in these playoffs at limiting. And for the Bucks, with Giannis literally being able to score at will, there is nothing you can do when Giannis is charging at you from a defensive standpoint. And how good the Bucks are able to spread the floor with their shooters, I really don't see nobody stopping these guys if they make it out the second round. And especially when they get Chris Middleton back, I strongly think that the Bucks might two-peat. Next, we got the Miami Heat. And when I think of the Heat, all I think about is how suffocating their defense is. For the playoffs, they rank number two in total defense, only allowing 105 points a game and they rank second in steals. And being an Atlanta Hawks fan, it was brutal watching that first round. We couldn't get nothing going. Watching the Heat, you can just tell that every game, they have an emphasis on defense and putting pressure on shooters. And by creating all those turnovers, they've been able to get a lot of fast break points, something they've been really dominant in. And during the regular season, I never really saw the Heat as a true one C. But during this year's playoffs, they've been proving me all the way wrong. And they've been showing the NBA world how dominant they are and just why they should have been a number one seed. Now, second to last, we have the Dallas Mavericks. And this is their third consecutive year making the playoffs. And losing in the first round in the last two years, this is their deepest playoff run since they won the championship back in 2011. Now, the Mavericks have been playing great in these playoffs. I love watching them play in these playoffs, especially in their series with the Suns. They've been able to create a lot of new opportunities on offense, which has helped players like Jalen Brunson emerge as true threats that the defense got to watch out for. But if they're looking to get out of this second round, they got to do more on defense. Now, they've amped up the intensity a bit on defense in recent games. But overall, it just seems like the Phoenix Suns have been able to have their way with the Dallas Mavericks on defense. Out of the remaining playoff teams, they're allowing the most points per game to their opponents with 113. And if the Mavericks are looking to knock off the number one seed in the West, they got to be able to shut down their shooters and shut down the paint. Because honestly, I feel like if they're able to make it out the second round, I think they really have a great chance at making the NBA Finals this year. But right now, it's all about how they approach every game defensively. But last but not least, we got the number one seed in the Western Conference, Phoenix Suns. Now, this is just my personal opinion, but the Phoenix Suns are clicking on all cylinders. And obviously, we know they made the NBA Finals last year, and I think they're well on track to get right back there again this year. 
And when I say they clicking on all cylinders, I especially mean on offense. I mean, is there anything they can't do on offense? They have three point threats, mid range threats, inside threats. I mean, they can do it all. And obviously we know they have high expectations from what they were able to accomplish last year. And I think it reflects in their play on the court. And when this team is rolling, all I really think you can do is just buckle up because there's nothing you can do to stop it. Now that we've analyzed all of the remaining NBA teams in the 2022 playoffs so far, what does Mel think this year's NBA Finals matchup is gonna look like? Now my NBA Finals prediction is going to be the Milwaukee Bucks versus the Golden State Warriors. Now, me personally, I'm a firm believer in playoff experience is everything. And not only do these teams both have playoff experience, but they have relatively recent championship experience as well. With the Milwaukee Bucks winning the NBA Finals last season and the Golden State Warriors making their fifth consecutive championship appearance in 2019. I think this championship experience and how well these teams are playing right now will make for an exciting and interesting NBA Finals matchup. But hey guys, that's just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, who you guys think are making it to the conference finals, and what are you guys' predictions for the NBA Finals right now? As always, like, comment, subscribe. Your support is greatly appreciated. It's your boy Mel. I hope you guys have a great, happy, and safe weekend, and I'm out. Peace.